If any of these behaviors seem familiar, it might be time to reassess who you have let into your inner circle. Remember, you deserve people who truly care about you, not just when it's convenient for them. One form of disrespect and betrayal is like an unexpected storm in a calm sea, sudden, intense and capable of leaving you bewildered. Imagine sharing a long-held dream with someone you love, only to hear a discouraging comment that diminishes it. This is a subtle form of disrespect, undermining the foundation of your aspirations with a single dismissive remark. Now, think of confiding a secret to a seemingly trustworthy friend, only to find out they have spread it to others. This is the sharp pain of betrayal, a violation of trust that leaves you feeling exposed and questioning who you can really trust. Disrespect and betrayal have been part of human history since time immemorial. From Brutus's betrayal of Julius Caesar to broken treaties and dissolved alliances, these acts have left a devastating mark. They serve as clear reminders of the importance of trust and the consequences of its breach. By understanding the past, we can learn to protect our future relationships. While the wounds of disrespect and betrayal can be deep, holding on to grudges only prolongs the pain. Forgiving is not about condoning the actions of others, but freeing yourself from the weight of negativity. Imagine carrying a heavy stone. It burdens you and hinders your movement. Forgiveness is like leaving that stone behind, allowing you to move forward more freely. It is a choice for your own well-being, not an act of absolution for the other person. Disrespect often hides in jokes or disguised taunts. A colleague may constantly joke at your expense, masked as friendly humor, but the underlying message is clear. They do not respect you. Or a family member might criticize your life choices under the guise of helpful advice. These actions, while seemingly harmless, erode your self-esteem over time. It's like having cracks in a solid wall. Each one weakens it a little more. Betrayal, on the other hand, is direct and painful. Imagine working hard on a project, sacrificing time and effort, only to have a friend steal your idea and present it as their own. The emotional impact is profound, a mix of anger, pain and disillusionment. You invested trust and energy only to see it cruelly taken away. The consequences of disrespect and betrayal can linger long beyond the initial event. When someone ignores your boundaries, it creates an environment of anxiety and insecurity, like living with a faulty security alarm, always expecting the next violation. Betrayal can leave you emotionally scarred, like having your favorite book torn from your hands, making you hesitant to trust again. However, even in the darkness, there is hope. You have the power to reclaim your autonomy and rebuild trust. Start by setting clear and assertive boundaries. If a friend constantly makes inappropriate comments, tell them it is unacceptable. If a colleague gossips, confront them directly or distance yourself from the negativity. Remember, silence can be interpreted as consent. Not all relationships are meant to last forever. Some, like wilted flowers, have simply run their course. If someone constantly disrespects you or betrays your trust, maintaining that connection only prolongs the pain. Letting go, although difficult, can be a powerful act of self-love. It creates space for healthier new connections. Imagine a cluttered room where you can barely move, Letting go is like clearing the mess, making room for things that bring joy. Building healthy relationships starts with valuing self-respect. Imagine yourself as a magnificent garden. Disrespect and betrayal are like weeds that steal your nutrients and choke your growth. By setting healthy boundaries and surrounding yourself with respectful people, you nourish your garden and allow it to flourish. These individuals appreciate you for who you are and celebrate your dreams. They are the sun and rain that help you reach your potential. So take a stand. Do not accept relationships that make you feel diminished or disrespected. You deserve kindness, honesty 
and appreciation. Life is richer alongside those who value you and celebrate your achievements. By prioritizing your well-being and setting clear boundaries, you create a space where trust and respect can thrive. Remember, having the strength to walk away from situations that diminish you is a power worth exercising. The Ghost in Communication Have you ever felt the frustration of sending a heartfelt message only to be met with silence? It's like shouting into an abyss, waiting for an echo that never comes. This phenomenon, known as ghosting, is more than just simple silence. It reflects the level of someone's investment in your relationship. When your messages go unanswered, your calls are avoided, and genuine interest seems absent, it reveals a lot about the state of that relationship. Communication is the foundation of any meaningful relationship. It's not just about exchanging words. It's about feeling heard, understood, and valued. When someone constantly ghosts you, it's as if they're erecting an invisible barrier, choosing to remain distant and disengaged. This behavior can make you question your worth and the sincerity of their intentions. Are they too busy? Are they intentionally avoiding you? These unanswered questions can breed doubt and frustration, eroding the trust and closeness that should flourish between two people who care. Moreover, the impact of ghosting goes beyond the immediate silence. It can affect your emotional well-being, making you feel neglected and unimportant. It's natural to expect reciprocity in communication and that the effort to connect will be met with equal enthusiasm. When this doesn't happen, it can lead to feelings of rejection and loneliness. Meaningful relationships thrive on mutual engagement, not on one-sided efforts falling on deaf ears. Ghosting also reveals a lot about the other person's priorities and values. In an interconnected world where technology allows instant communication, ignoring attempts to connect suggests that maintaining a relationship with you is not a priority or that there is a lack of emotional maturity to handle difficult conversations. In either case, it highlights a misalignment in the importance and effort required to sustain the relationship. Sometimes ghosting can result from a fear of confrontation, avoidance of uncomfortable conversations, or a lack of interest. Regardless of the cause, the effect is often the same, a growing distance between two individuals who were once connected. This distance can breed resentment and pain, further weakening the trust essential for healthy relationships. Interestingly, the rise of ghosting in modern relationships reflects social changes in communication norms. With the increase in digital interactions, the boundaries of social etiquette and acceptable behavior are constantly evolving. What was once considered rude may now be seen as common, though still painful. This cultural shift raises questions about how we define respect and consideration, especially in romantic and platonic relationships. Navigating life after ghosting requires introspection and self-care. It's crucial to recognize your own worth and not internalize the other person's lack of effective communication. Healthy relationships are based on mutual respect, openness, and a willingness to face challenges together. If ghosting becomes a pattern, it can be an opportunity to reassess the suitability of the relationship for your emotional needs and values. While ghosting can be painful, it can also be a valuable lesson in self-worth and discernment, helping to prioritize reciprocal and enriching relationships. By honoring your boundaries and expectations, you create space for connections that elevate and enrich your life, where communication flows and both parties feel valued. In summary, ghosting in communication is more than just silence. It's an indicator of priorities and emotional investment in a relationship. Recognizing this behavior allows you to cultivate authentic and fulfilling connections, where communication is the foundation of mutual respect and care. In the brilliant court of Elizabeth. 
In the brilliant court of Elizabeth I of England, Queen Elizabeth was a powerful monarch known for her intelligence, political acumen, and iconic status as the Virgin Queen. Amidst the court intrigues and international tensions, one figure stood out in her inner circle, Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, a charismatic nobleman known for his charm, ambition, and loyalty to the Queen. Their story began in childhood, with Robert and Elizabeth forming a close bond as tutor and pupil, companions and confidants. Their shared experiences, including the tumultuous events of Elizabeth's youth, solidified an emotional connection that would endure over the years. As they matured, their relationship evolved into a complex blend of friendship, political partnership, and undeniable romantic tension. Despite Robert's marriage to Amy Robsart, Elizabeth's affection for him remained steadfast. Their correspondences and private meetings became channels for expressing their deepest thoughts, fears, and hopes. Their letters were not just diplomatic communications, but intimate dialogues filled with desires and longings veiled under political pretenses. Elizabeth's court was rife with speculation about their relationship. Rumors whispered of secret encounters and clandestine meetings, while courtiers vied for favor and influence. Yet amidst these political intrigues, the bond between Elizabeth and Robert persisted, a testament to their mutual understanding and emotional connection. Their relationship faced numerous obstacles, including the scandal surrounding Amy Robsart's mysterious death in 1560, which cast a shadow over Robert's association with Elizabeth. Additionally, Elizabeth's duties often kept them apart, but their letters kept the connection alive. The depth of their relationship shone through during personal crises and triumphs. When Robert faced accusations and political rivalries, Elizabeth offered support through carefully crafted letters and private meetings. Their communication became an essential support system amidst the whirlwind of court politics, reinforcing their bond as allies and confidants. The story of Elizabeth I and Robert Dudley is a powerful reminder of the impact of communication on matters of the heart and state. Their letters, filled with loyalty and affection, transcend time and status. They reveal a complex intertwining of emotions, love, duty, ambition, and sacrifice that shaped their personal and political lives. The relationship between Elizabeth and Robert exemplifies how communication, whether through letters or symbolic gestures, can illuminate history's most fascinating personalities, showcasing the enduring power of connection amidst the intricate dynamics of royal courts and personal relationships. In the end, their story is a testament to the profound effect of communication on personal and political relationships. The brilliant court of Elizabeth I, with its grandeur and intrigue, is etched into history as a vivid tapestry of power, affection, and the timeless dance of human connection. Culture and known for her intense self-portraits, Frida Kahlo met Diego Rivera, the renowned muralist and communist activist in Mexico City in the early 1920s. Rivera, already celebrated for his monumental murals addressing Mexico's history and social struggles, was immediately captivated by Kahlo's sharp mind, bold artistic style, and striking presence. Their initial meeting sparked a passionate connection that defied conventional norms of age and temperament. Despite their marked differences, Rivera, older and fervent in his political activism, and Carlo, younger and introspective with a penchant for surrealism, they were drawn to each other's artistic genius and shared commitment to Mexican cultural identity their romance unfolded against the vibrant backdrop of the Mexican artistic scene and revolutionary fervor, where they engaged in heated debates, collaborated artistically, and navigated the complexities of love and fidelity. Their relationship was marked by intense emotional highs and lows. 
Rivera's charm and Carlo's fiery spirit fueled a tumultuous romance filled with passionate exchanges and artistic collaboration. Carlo's paintings, rich with symbolism and raw emotion, often depicted their turbulent relationship, exploring themes of love, pain and resilience with disarming honesty. Rivera's monumental murals celebrated Mexico's indigenous heritage and social struggles, reflecting his admiration for Carlo's indomitable spirit and indigenous roots. The relationship between Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera was markedly unconventional. Rivera's multiple infidelities, including an affair with Carlo's younger sister Cristina, deeply affected Carlo and tested the strength of their marriage. Despite these betrayals, Carlo maintained a deep love for Rivera, and their bond evolved into a rich tapestry of loyalty, forgiveness, and mutual artistic inspiration. Their communication transcended words. Carlo's letters to Rivera, filled with passion and vulnerability, revealed her most intimate thoughts and offered a means to express love and anguish during periods of separation. Rivera, in turn, responded with often poetic and remorseful correspondences, seeking to mend the wounds in their relationship and reaffirm their creative partnership. A notable example of this intimate communication emerged during Carlo's long hospitalizations due to health issues. Even with physical distance, their exchanged letters, laden with longing and dedication, provided solace and strength during emotional turmoil. These missives not only filled the physical absence, but also preserved the intimacy and emotional connection that defined their enduring relationship. Their bond, marked by intense passion and artistic symbiosis, left a lasting impact on 20th century art. Despite personal hardships, Carlo and Rivera's partnership shaped Mexican art and cultural identity, challenging social norms and transforming the artistic narrative. Their legacy continues to inspire artists and admirers worldwide, highlighting the transformative impact of love, forgiveness and authentic communication amidst the complexities of personal and artistic life. The story of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera illustrates how communication, whether through art, letters or a shared passion, can transcend differences and social expectations, showcasing the enduring impact of emotional connection and intimate communication in shaping destinies and artistic legacies. When someone incessantly seeks to be the center of attention in every conversation, it often reflects a deep level of self-absorption that impacts their relationships. This behavior can manifest in various ways, such as continually redirecting conversations to themselves or diminishing others' contributions. In social settings, these individuals tend to monopolize discussions leaving little room for others to share their own experiences or thoughts. Research indicates that people with narcissistic traits constantly seek admiration and validation, often at the expense of genuine connection with others. For instance, in a group setting, someone with narcissistic tendencies might repeatedly interrupt or steer the conversation to highlight their own achievements or experiences. This pattern not only diminishes others' contributions, but also reinforces the notion that their perspective is the most important. Over time, this can alienate friends and colleagues who feel disregarded or undervalued in the relationship. In professional environments, self-absorbed individuals might prioritize their own advancement over teamwork. They may claim credit for collective achievements or undermine colleagues' efforts to stand out. Studies show that workplaces with high levels of narcissism among employees can suffer from decreased productivity and morale due to a lack of collaboration and trust. In personal relationships, a partner who dominates every conversation with their own victories or problems may fail to provide the emotional support the other needs. This imbalance can lead to feelings of neglect or frustration, 
as the needs and emotions of the less dominant partner are consistently overlooked. According to psychological studies, narcissism can have roots in childhood experiences where individuals were either excessively praised or neglected by caregivers. This early environment might have instilled the belief that their needs are more important than those of others. Consequently, they may struggle to empathize with others' perspectives or prioritize others' feelings and interactions. For example, narcissistic individuals might show a lack of empathy towards others' struggles or emotions, focusing solely on how situations affect them personally. This egocentric perspective can hinder the formation of meaningful connections and the maintenance of close relationships, as empathy and reciprocity are essential for healthy interpersonal dynamics. In social psychology, narcissism is often associated with an exaggerated sense of self and a constant need for admiration. Research indicates that people with high levels of narcissism tend to demonstrate lower levels of empathy and compassion for others as their focus remains predominantly on their own desires and aspirations. For example, in a therapeutic context, clients with narcissistic traits might seek help for issues like depression or anxiety, but struggle to engage in meaningful self-reflection or acknowledge the impact of their behavior on others. Therapy can help narcissistic individuals develop healthier relationship patterns by encouraging self-awareness and empathy. When someone dominates every conversation and shows little interest in others' lives or feelings, it may signal underlying narcissistic tendencies. This behavior affects not only interpersonal relationships, but also reflects a deep need for validation and admiration. Recognizing these patterns can help individuals seek support and develop healthier ways of relating to others, fostering more balanced and fulfilling connections in their personal and professional lives. Encountering such individuals can be both captivating and draining. Their ability to capture attention might initially seem charismatic, drawing others into their orbit. However, over time, their self-centeredness becomes apparent. You might end up craving a more meaningful conversation where your thoughts and feelings are valued as much as theirs. This dynamic can strain relationships as the imbalance of attention can make one party feel neglected or undervalued. In social contexts, these individuals often excel at storytelling, captivating audiences with their engaging narratives. Their tales frequently revolve around personal achievements or dramatic experiences, subtly reinforcing their central role. This narrative dominance can shape group dynamics, steering interactions around their perspectives and experiences. Redirecting conversations to a more inclusive exchange can be challenging, but is essential to ensure everyone feels heard and respected. Ironically, their constant quest for affirmation can lead to a shallow understanding of others' lives. Genuine empathy takes a backseat when conversations are incessantly centered on their own world. They might overlook others' discomfort or interest signals, perpetuating a cycle of self-focused dialogue. This lack of social awareness can harm friendships and professional relationships, as others struggle to connect on a deeper, mutual level. From a stoic perspective, this behavior starkly contrasts with the ideal of virtue and altruism. Stoics emphasize the importance of empathy and understanding in building meaningful connections. The self-absorbed individual, immersed in their own narrative, may miss opportunities for personal growth and true connection. Their focus on validation through external attention perpetuates a fragile self-esteem dependent on constant affirmation rather than intrinsic values. Dealing with self-centered individuals requires patience and self-awareness. Understanding their need for validation can foster compassion, allowing a deeper understanding of the roots of their behavior without encouraging it. Setting boundaries is crucial, asserting your own need for reciprocity in conversations and relationships 
gently redirecting dialogue towards shared interests or inviting others to share their perspectives can foster a more balanced exchange where all voices are heard. In some cases, directly confronting the self-absorption can prompt introspection and positive changes. Honest feedback, offered with empathy and respect, can lead to self-reflection and awareness of how their behavior impacts others. This approach requires tact and sensitivity, balancing mutual respect with the need to address imbalances in communication. Ultimately, understanding the dynamics of self-centeredness goes beyond the surface. It delves into the complexities of human behavior, revealing insecurities and psychological patterns that shape interpersonal interactions. By fostering empathy and seeking genuine connections, we can navigate these dynamics with integrity and compassion, honoring both our own needs and those of others in our social circles. The absence in times of need reveals much about the depth of a relationship. When we face challenges, whether personal or professional, we naturally seek support from those we believe care about us. Those who are conspicuously absent during such moments speak volumes about their priorities and genuine level of concern. Imagine a scenario where you are intensely dedicated to a personal goal, hoping for encouragement or just a listening ear. The people who consistently show up and actively engage with your progress are the ones who value your journey. Their constant presence is a reflection of their investment in your well-being and success. In contrast, those who disappear when the going gets tough may not prioritize your needs or lack the empathy to understand your struggles. In relationships, whether friendships or romances, mutual support during tough times is essential. It is in these moments of vulnerability that we truly understand the depth of our bonds. Those absent during challenges may lack the emotional maturity or capacity to provide the necessary support. This absence can result from various reasons, such as personal insecurities, an inability to handle emotional situations, or a lack of understanding about what true support entails. Moreover, absence in times of need not only affects the immediate situation, but can erode trust and create feelings of disappointment or even resentment. Trust is built on reliability and consistency, especially when you depend on someone's support or presence. When someone repeatedly fails to be present during your times of need, it can strain the relationship and make you question their commitment and reliability. Conversely, those who consistently demonstrate presence and support during challenges contribute to the strength and resilience of a relationship. Their engagement provides comfort, encouragement, and a sense of solidarity that reinforces the bond between individuals. For instance, when a friend actively supports you through a difficult period, their involvement becomes a testament to their genuine care and investment in the relationship. Their actions speak louder than words, affirming their role as a reliable and empathetic presence in your life. In personal and professional relationships, presence in times of need serves as a crucial indicator of commitment and empathy. It highlights the depth of emotional investment and the capacity to provide meaningful support. Those who show up when you need them the most demonstrate a profound understanding of what it means to be truly supportive and dependable. Their presence becomes a cornerstone of trust and a defining factor in the strength and quality of the relationship.